As I stepped into my quiet home, the familiar buzz of my phone pulled me from my thoughts. I had just returned from a week-long business trip overseas, feeling jet-lagged but glad to be back. When I saw my mother-in-law Julie's name on the screen, I paused before answering. Her calls were unpredictable, often ranging from idle chatter to sudden requests for money. This time, though, something felt off. Her excitement was almost tangible. Olivia, you won't believe it, she exclaimed, her voice brimming with energy. You've saved $100,000. I froze in the middle of the living room, her words hanging heavy in the air. What was she talking about? $100,000? My thoughts raced. As a freelance jewelry designer, I'm always careful with my finances. I have emergency savings, but not anything close to that just sitting around. Besides, I had my bank card with me throughout my trip. Julie's voice broke through my confusion, still casual. You left it in the sideboard drawer. I figured since you're doing so well, it was fine for me to use it. A knot formed in my stomach. What are you talking about? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. I hadn't left any money in the drawer. Before I could ask further, she quickly thanked me and hinted at needing more financial help in the future. And just like that, she hung up, leaving me standing in a whirlwind of questions. I stood there for a moment, phone still in hand, trying to process what had just happened. $100,000? In the sideboard? My hands shook as I opened the drawer, even though I already knew it would be empty. Of course, there was nothing. Why would Julie think it was okay to take money from her home? Was this some sort of misunderstanding, or was something more serious going on? My husband, Larry, was due home soon, and I was determined to get answers. As the minutes passed, my worry deepened. Could Larry have left the money there? But why in such a careless spot? We had always been careful with our finances, especially since starting our jewelry design business together. Larry had recently quit his corporate job to help me manage the growing demands of our brand, and we were balancing our roles carefully. When Larry finally walked through the door, I wasted no time. Julie called, I said, unable to mask the tension in my voice. She said she took $100,000 from the sideboard drawer. Do you know anything about that? Larry's face drained of color, and I knew immediately something was wrong. He rubbed the back of his neck, avoiding my eyes. I... I didn't think she'd actually take it, he muttered, his voice barely audible. What do you mean? I asked, my heart pounding. Larry let out a long sigh, finally looking at me. A few weeks ago, Julie started asking for more money. You know how she is. She thinks we're living in luxury just because of the business. She doesn't understand that most of what she sees is just obligations, not indulgence. Anyway, she got herself into more debt. Credit cards, loans, it spiraled out of control. A chill ran down my spine. What does that have to do with $100,000? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. I was just trying to help her out of trouble, he admitted, his voice heavy with guilt. I withdrew the money to pay off some of her debts, but I wasn't ready to tell you. I thought I'd have time to sort it out before you got back. I didn't think she'd just take it from the house like that. My mind spun. Julie had always been a bit reckless with money, but this was a whole new level. The fact that she had taken such a large amount without permission was shocking, but what hurt more was Larry's secrecy. My husband, the person I trusted most, had hidden a huge sum of money in our home, and his mother had just helped herself to it. Larry, I said, fighting to stay composed, do you understand what you've done? This isn't just about the money, it's about trust. How could you not tell me? Larry's shoulders slumped as he sank into a chair. I know, he whispered. I was trying to protect you from the stress. We've been doing so well, and I didn't want Julie's problems to drag us down. But it was already too late. The weight of Julie's actions and Larry's secrecy had already started to pull us under. This wasn't the first time Julie had caused problems. Over the years, she had developed a habit of asking for money under the guise of needing help. But more often than not, it was for frivolous things, parties, clothes, even vacations. Every time, Larry would give in, hoping to keep the peace, but it only seemed to make things worse. Julie never truly grasped the reality of our situation. She saw the growth of our business, the events we attended, but she was blind to the long hours, the financial balancing act, and the stress that came with keeping our brand afloat. 
Every dollar we spent was meticulously planned to ensure the survival of the business. We weren't living in luxury. We were in survival mode. Despite this, Larry had always had a soft spot for his mother. He dreaded confrontation and preferred to give in to her demands rather than deal with her tantrums. But now, we were in a situation that couldn't be fixed with a simple handout. I turned to Larry, my frustration rising. We can't keep doing this. Julie's out of control. You have to stop giving in to her demands. Larry nodded, his face clouded with regret. I know, this has gone too far. In the days that followed, Julie's calls became more frequent. At first, it was small favors, but soon she was asking for bigger things. Money for a new dress, a fancy handbag, and even for a lavish party she was planning. Each time, Larry tried to explain that we couldn't afford to keep giving her money, but Julie refused to listen. She was convinced we had more than enough to spare. Then one day, things took an unexpected turn. Julie showed up at our door, her face flushed with frustration. Why didn't you tell me the money had strings attached? She demanded the moment she stepped inside. Larry and I exchanged puzzled glances. What are you talking about? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm, even though I felt anything but. The $100,000, she snapped. I tried to buy something the other day and my card was declined. Why did you put a limit on my spending? Larry's eyes widened in disbelief. You maxed out the card already? Julie crossed her arms defiantly. It's not fair. You two are always going to fancy places, buying expensive things. Why shouldn't I get to enjoy myself too? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Julie, we're not spending money for fun. These are business expenses. What you're doing is entirely different. But it's all money, she argued. You just don't want me to have any fun. In that moment, something inside me snapped. This isn't about fun, Julie. You took money that wasn't yours and spent it without asking. That's theft, plain and simple. Julie looked shocked, as though the idea had never crossed a mind. But I'm family, she said, as if that made her actions excusable. Family or not, what you did was wrong, I said firmly. And now, you've put us in a difficult position. Larry, who had been silent until now, finally spoke up. Julie, we've tried to help you, but you've crossed a line. We can't keep supporting your lifestyle. It's time for you to take responsibility. Julie didn't take the news well. She stormed out of the house, slamming the door behind her. For a while, we didn't hear from her, and I hoped she had finally understood the seriousness of what she'd done. But I was wrong. The call started again, though this time, they weren't just requests for money. They were filled with desperation. Olivia, please, I need your help. Julie begged during one of her calls. The creditors are after me. They're threatening to take everything. I could hear the fear in her voice, but I knew we couldn't bail her out again. We had already given so much, and now our own future was on the line. One evening, as we sat in the living room, exhausted from another long day, Larry's phone buzzed with yet another call from Julie. He stared at the screen for a moment before silencing it and setting it down with a deep sigh. We can't keep doing this, he said quietly, echoing the words I had spoken weeks earlier. I've enabled her for too long, and now she's in a mess I can't fix. I nodded, understanding the weight of his decision. Julie had always relied on Larry to get her out of trouble, but this time was different. The stakes were too high, and we couldn't let her drag us down with her. After much discussion, Larry made the tough choice to cut Julie off financially. It wasn't easy, and there were moments when he doubted whether he was doing the right thing. But in the end, we both knew it was the only option. Julie needed to learn that actions have consequences, and we needed to protect ourselves from her reckless behavior. As we prepared to move abroad for a new business opportunity, we tried to leave the ordeal behind us, but it wasn't simple. Julie continued to call, begging for help, but we had made our choice. The move overseas brought its own challenges, but also new opportunities for us. Our business flourished in the international market, and soon we were receiving offers from all corners of the globe. It was an exciting time, yet it carried a bittersweet note. As we embraced our new life, there was always the lingering thought of what we had left behind. Julie had sold her house to settle her debts, but even that wasn't enough. 
She now lived in a small apartment, working part-time to get by. It was a stark contrast to the life she once knew, and while I felt some sympathy for her, I also understood that her situation was the direct result of her poor choices. As the months went by, Larry and I often reflected on everything that had transpired. The ordeal with Julie had taught us a vital lesson about the need for boundaries and the significance of financial responsibility. We had worked tirelessly to build our business and life together, and we weren't going to let anyone, family or not, put that in jeopardy. Julie's story served as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of managing our resources wisely and staying true to our values. Though the road had been tough, we had emerged stronger, more united, and more determined to continue creating the life we had worked so hard to build. As I stood by the window of our new home, overlooking the bustling city, I couldn't help but reflect on how far we had come. The challenges with Julie had tested our relationship, but they had also brought Larry and me closer. We had learned to lean on each other, communicate openly, and establish firm boundaries when needed. Our business was thriving, and while the future was still full of unknowns, we knew we were heading in the right direction. The road ahead held challenges, but we were ready to face them together.